Welcome to Another White Boy Talks About What It's Like Being in Another Country Disseminating Behavior Analysis. But first, real quick, let's uh... <sighs> Yes, I've worn this like three straight days in a row while I was prepping all these scripts. Carlos, thank you, man. Love it. Before we talk about the trip and what dissemination is, we need to talk about what it is not. It's no one thing. That is, you can't put a link on social media or a post and saying that you're doing stuff and then quote, call that it's that single post dissemination. You can't state your values and do something without considering the lasting long-term impacts that you're going to actually produce. There is a time factor here. And it is definitely not going somewhere for vacation, doing a single talk, and now you have disseminated to another country. There are countless ways that we've talked about dissemination in our field, and surprisingly, this channel is not primarily first dissemination. It is just documenting the journey towards attempts to do such things. One of those is a trip that happened in Brazil. I committed to documenting and sharing those. We did a six part series that I've released on this channel already. It was a behind the scenes that we uploaded while we were there. But this is the kind of deep dive. What actually happened? What makes these sort of trips happen? What are the outcomes? What are the stories that we found along the way? So if you're up for a six part series, now is the time to watch, sit down. This is the first of the six videos. If you aren't going to commit to six videos, you're not gonna get the full story. So you're probably best just clicking out now, not watching these in isolation. There's one every day for five days with two on Saturday this week for you to enjoy. Megan Miller made this trip possible, her herself. She works with Navigation Behavioral Consulting as well as Peak ABA Solutions, and her work is what led to this happening. So just up front, this is a sponsored video by a patron here, Megan Miller, not the companies. And one last housekeeping thing, I've tagged people that are actually doing the work here. I am the venue that's sharing and communicating these stories on the channel, but the people doing the hard work are linked on every single video and every single post related to this so that you can hear from them and they can give in their comments as well. So everybody, please do that. Across the series, I'm gonna share with you how we got there, some of the people that we met, the things that were accomplished, some of the similarities and differences between the cultures, behavior analysis in those cultures, perspectives that I gathered from practitioners and parents of children diagnosed with autism. And we'll be ending on some of the larger cultural differences between the US and Brazil, because so many of you ask what those are. So if you're in, buckle up, get ready, because we are off to Brazil. So the goal of today is to talk about the similarities and differences and some of the pain points that we'd seen down there while we were visiting. Some interesting parallels, families and practitioners are equally, I would say, just as worried about the quality of services that should be expected from practitioners that are down there. That being said, even though the BACB has influence on certificate holders across the world, we realize that there is an entirely different culture, a different market, a different perception towards how that governing agency really is performing, going to help, and have the resources to help perform in those cultures outside of the US. I'd say on large, a lot of the issues that people have from governing agencies like the BACB are mirrored down there, just like we experience here in the United States. A very similar issue between the practitioners, the people teaching in the institutions, completing the research, as well as what is needed in the community, that is very unfortunately similar as we experience here in the US. There's disconnects amongst them all. With people trying to fix this, but with the rapid growth, it just it exacerbates the issues. As we've seen with early days in the US certification system, many people are going out and claiming that some sort of amount of training that could be as little as you know, 5, 10, 20 hours are actually enough to be providing services. And we see this ripple effect throughout the communities down there. Parents literally crying, talking about how they've gone through services where they were promised for sometimes years that there would be effects and no growth was seen. And part of this is this idea that ABA is solely autism treatment, and that is, which is unfortunate to see this misunderstanding in like at least 10 countries in the last year. I think the ship sailed, like ABA is synonymous with autism treatment for most people, Brazil included. One other thing that was communicated that is unfortunately similar to the US is that those with the most severe needs, the most impacted, the most, the most difficult social economic statuses are the ones that are getting the least amount of services. Capitalism continues to influence this field. It always will, but I'm not sure that we are leveraging that to provide the services in the best model possible in any country. I'm not critiquing any particular one. 
And just like in the US, we saw with Catherine and Maurice's Let Me Hear Your Voice and the role of a grassroots movement pushing and propelling a service model forward, caregivers and family members are crucial in the development of service models. But these parents know that help out there does actually exist. They just don't know where to get it, what form it is going to be in, and how to access something that is going to work and scale. They know of ABA, but the lack of it being available in quality practitioners is extremely exacerbated compared to the United States. Personally, I get a little down on this because when you run the numbers, um, I did that in another video, it's linked right here, you'll see that our model cannot meet the demand of autism diagnoses alone. It just doesn't add up. Love to hear your thoughts on maybe how we can fill that gap, but I personally don't see it happening in the current systems that are built. To shift gears a little bit, the differences that we saw in this community were, were, were enlightening and heartwarming. There is a true commitment to understanding the science, that, that being the different pillars from philosophy to ABA to EAB to practice. Portion of well-trained analysts there, as opposed to just strictly implementation specialists, was unreal. It was, it was great to be around that community. And that was mirrored by an extremely high level of motivation. So my hat's off to all of you. There's a lot of hardworking people that I met on this trip. And although there are those disconnects that we talked about earlier between training, the practitioners, the researchers, there are some of them out there that are trying to actively solve those problems. So that kind of sets the stage. Dissemination itself, and specifically in Brazil, dates back to Fred Keller, as well as a bunch of other people. Today's task for you is to look into the people that are actively working so that we can kind of start to build a foundation and set the stage for the future video. So they are linked down below. Make sure that you go check them out. Please leave them a comment down below, praising their efforts, asking them any particular questions that you may have. So tomorrow you will meet Daniello who helped make this trip possible. Without her, none of it literally could have happened. And a grassroots movement led by a bunch of mothers who have children diagnosed with autism and related disabilities. So tune back in, I'll see you then. Remember, go check people out, send your prayers. <laughs>